Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dirty Balls podcast, the end of year edition. Somebody please ask me why I'm wearing Braves stuff today. Because the Braves suck. No. Alan, ask me why I'm wearing Braves stuff today. Why do you wear Braves stuff today? Well, the reason why I am wearing Braves stuff today, and you guys are gonna you guys are gonna enjoy this when I when I bring it full circle, is because on tonight's edition of ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, we have the Braves, Braves and Mets. the Braves and the Mets. And what's important about this game is that the Braves and Mets have both already secured a postseason berth. However, the winner of this game will pretty much determine who is the winner of the East and who goes to the wild card. So the Braves win, they they pretty much win the East. And the uh, if the Braves win, the Mets have to win all the rest of their games and the Braves have to lose all the rest of theirs. And with the Braves going on to play the Marlins, I don't see that happening. And if the Mets win, then they pretty much lock in the East. So, or they tie with the Braves and then they got the tiebreaker. So it's a very weird thing. But anyway, if the Braves win this game, they pretty much win the East. And if they lose this game, they're in the wild card. Anyway, speaking of playoff baseball, we just had some playoff baseball in the Rangers organization that we're going to talk about today. Good job. Really? Told you I'd bring it all full circle. But before we talk about that, I'm going to do something that I get on to Ethan to do, get, get on to him about doing. That you know, because we are not this kind of a podcast, but I want to give out a shout out to Landon Huffman for winning the Hickory Motor Speedway Championship. So, but the reason I'm saying that is because he sits in section 17, part of the six man, and gives the away team as just as much hell, if not more hell, than 108. So hmm. Well, while we're talking about hickory-based race car drivers, Matt Benedetto just won the truck race the other day. So we all know somebody somewhere that's uh, somebody somewhere that we all know probably Mm -hmm. had a moment and had to go change his pants after that happened. Oh yes, he had he had a moment that scared both of his dogs, and they both went and hid under chairs for about twenty minutes. Look, when my driver wins a race, I'm quite happy about it, but. There's a point where it gets a little bit weird. Like my friend, uh, I don't, I won't say his name. I have another friend who, when Chase Elliott wins, y- you would think that that's his son or something. And, or, and when Chase Elliott, like Chase Elliott, can finish second, and he'll whine like it's the end of the world. Like, come on, bro, he won like eleven races this year. It's gonna be fine. Anyway, back to baseball. Who was uh, in the playoffs? That we can talk about, Alan or Jeremy, because you guys remember these things and I often forget them. Because I'm a multi fan. I'm out here covering baseball and football these days. Well, the in the Rangers organization, Frisco was in the playoffs. And from what I understand, they won. Yes. Yes, they did. The whole thing. They swept every, every part of the playoffs. They swept. See, I remember somebody won. I just didn't remember who it was. Fuck, ass. How do you you call yourself a fan? Yeah. But yeah, Frisco, they, they won the Texas League Championship. First time in, I want to say 20 years, maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but it's been a good bit like yeah. since they won. Um, they played the... Wind surge. I can't remember what's the city name. Wichita. Wichita. Yeah. Wichita. So, um, don't even know what affiliate they are. Care less anything. But I'll find that out real quick. Good job. But yeah, we uh, played in Frisco the first game, and then went to Wichita, and it was a great game. I mean, Wichita was I think winning like seven to nothing. We came back and they went into extra innings. And then, you know, we got the whole runner on second thing. And I'm going to say that mm-hmm. Brandon Chavez was the MVP of the game. Because, I mean, if he hadn't got the hit, he wouldn't have scored Acuna, you know, who, who would have known? And then once they started scoring, they didn't really stop. 
So it, it was flipping awesome. Well, a couple yeah. things. One, congratulations on finally pronouncing Acuna correctly. And uh-huh. two, two, the wind surge are with the Minnesota Twins. Or at least they have been. Well, they've only been in the league. They've only been a, a club for two years. They were with the Miami oh, no, Marlins no. For two, in 2020, yeah. and they've been with the Twins since 2021. I can't remember who they used to be, but they've only been the wind surge for two years. They used to be another identity before that. Well, if only somebody on this podcast like to have it like to talk about history of minor league baseball. Yeah. They uh and I don't think they were in double A. I think they were like uh short season ball. And then somebody and then they got picked up. You know, the, during all the, when, the when, minor league, when Rob Manfred was going around screwing everything up, they managed to make it through that. Well, this wouldn't have yeah. been a uh, this wouldn't have been a, uh, a Manfred era thing because there were the Wichita Wranglers that existed from 1987 to 2007, who were with the Padres, and then who else but the Kansas City Royals? It all comes back. Uh, the Wichita Arrows. Uh, who I can tell just by their logo were a Montreal affiliate. They have that red, white, blue thing. Uh, they were they existed from 1970 to 1984. We're getting closer. I don't think they were in Wichita either. I think they were another team that got brought in. But let me see if I can find out. Live research. This is riveting content. Live research. But one um, doesn't happen. Blaine Grimm got promoted to AAA, so he played in Round Rock for a couple games after a monstrous week of hitting homers and grand slams and everything. And I was sitting here watching the game the Frisco game when the championship and I was like you know it sucks that he got called up because you know he doesn't get a ring because he wasn't playing with the team and everything but come to find out everybody that played on the team this year gets a ring so I was super happy about that because he he posted on Instagram them winning and he said the boys won and I said well you know don't think that you wasn't a big part of that because I mean Blaine had a spectacular year, and I don't know the stats and everything, but hopefully, you know, we get him on the show. I talked to his mom and everything and, you know, told him he still owes us an interview, but he's going to take this year off because he played 18 months of baseball. So, yeah, he the, the, the kid needs a rest, so. If I, seem, yeah. uh, if I seem half out of touch during this show, it's because I'm currently watching that uh, ever-important Braves and Mets game that I had mentioned. Okay. Well, since we're interrupted, you, 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 interrupt. you know what? You, while we're talking, since I just mentioned that, since I just mentioned ESPN, hey, ESPN, if I wanted to watch Aaron Judge's every at-bat while I was trying to watch college football, I would just turn it to that channel, Okay. You don't need to cut in every time. Thank you. No, no, you wouldn't because it's blacked out. Oh, yeah, because Orioles, Orioles games are blacked out in this yeah. region. Yeah, because for whatever reason, they think that, you know, the Orioles are broadcast in in North Carolina the, hundreds of miles away. On my cable package, there are two uh, regionally broadcasted baseball teams, the Braves and the Reds. And even the Reds seems like a bit of a stretch. But yeah. the, I don't see why they would think that the Orioles would be local. I don't get it either. They must go, oh, there is MLB a package. I think on my MLB package, the Braves, no. the Orioles. The MLB package, the Orioles are blacked out. Yes, because the way that the MLB package works is – it only works for out-of-market games. So games that it thinks are in your market get blacked out. So that's why the Braves get blacked out. But for some reason, so do the Orioles. Because, I mean, it's not that far of a drive, pretty much. 
But the Nationals, which is... Yeah, but nobody around here broadcasts it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, why would they block out the Orioles and not the Nationals if, if that, that's conceivably... That's conceivably the same region because Baltimore and D.C. are very close to each other. Just about the same city. Yeah. But anyway, get off of that and get back on what we were talking about with the uh, um, Frisco, with the Rough Riders, and the wind surge. Before they were the wind surge and the Wichita wind surge, they were the New Orleans baby cakes. That's right. Good job. It doesn't seem right New Orleans not having a team. And now New Orleans has no minor league baseball teams, I don't think. I think yeah, no New, baseball. Orleans, New Orleans, I think, is the largest American city without an MLB, like the biggest population without a uh, any form of professional baseball. Yeah, I, believe, I think you're, you're probably right about that. Because Charlotte is what Charlotte's often considered the biggest city without an MLB team, but at least they have the Knights. Yep. And uh, Montreal also is up there. Yeah, maybe one day they'll get a professional team again. Yeah, the, I mean, Charlotte, they have a couple of professional teams and also the Panthers. But do you really yeah. want? Do we really want Major League Baseball in Charlotte, though? Uh, yes, I would. Here's what me and Jeremy have talked about this quite a bit. Uh, the Braves, as much as I love the Braves, they have a bit of a fair weather fan problem. Where if they're doing well, they will sell out every game. But if they're not doing well, it will be one of the worst attended. Um, uh, place, uh, stadiums in baseball. If they were to move where all of their fans are, the Carolinas, they would pack out every game, whether they were doing good or not. Yep. I mean, in Atlanta, and this is not just the Braves, it's Atlanta sports in general, it, you know, except for college football. And ironically, soccer, they're, they're not, the number one oh, well. in MLS. That's not ironic to me. I just don't see I mean, Atlanta being a – I don't see Atlanta being a soccer town, but then they have the largest MLS attendance of the whole league. Well, I mean, the, the, the further south you go in the United States, the more, uh, the more people from South America and you know, from Mexico – that you get, or people not necessarily from there, but people that have ties to that region. And that makes sense is for Florida, but not for, that makes sense for Florida, but not for Georgia. They're all coming north, man. Okay, I mean Charlotte FC is and, their inaugural and season, and they're modern, already in, in the top uh, top ten in attendance. So, and as modern country fans know, there is such a thing as a Florida Georgia line. Well, let's not go to the border the country. That's a bit of a strong word. Boy, this has gone off the rails. What the hell calling, are we talking about? Calling them music is going too far. I like a few of their songs. A few. Not a lot, but a few. Just don't call them country. Don't give me a delicious brownie they're and the, tell me it's pizza. Anyway. They're the, they're the nickelback of country music. Okay, yes, I, I will concede. Alan, you were saying something about something <laughs> well anyway obviously the crowd heads didn't win their championship um do you guys know who won the south atlantic league championship mm -hmm. yeah i it's it's it, it escapes people me i said now. it escapes people me i right said now. after the first time played. we played them it first escapes time me we now, but as soon as you say it i'm gonna say oh yeah there it is yep. The first time they came to Hickory, I told anybody who would listen to me, there's your champions. There's nobody in the league's got anything for them. Bowling Green, right? Sure enough. Yep. Two years yep. in a row. I mean, I mean, Rome was good the second half, but You're damn right they were. Bowling Green is just another level. I mean, they're like a double A team playing in high. 
Well, it's it, and it's not Bowling Green itself. It's the Rays organization because Charleston mm-hmm. also won their championship in the Carolina League. What? Montgomery two years in a row also. Montgomery, they were in the playoffs. They didn't make it. Durham, they're going for the Triple A championship tomorrow night. It's, it's either tonight or tomorrow night. Uh, it is tonight. Because they, it is on TV tonight. I, I can actually turn it on right now, but I'm watching the Braves. It's on right now on channel 300-something that I somehow have. So they won their division, but they're actually going for the league championship. So Tampa Bay has it together. If they could ever get it together in the major league side, they're going to be fucking dangerous. Well, that's the thing. No organization ever simultaneously has a really good major league and minor league. It's or they do sometimes, but it's very rare. Usually, if one's good, the other's struggling because everybody that's good has already been called up, or vice versa, where everybody that's good hasn't been called up yet. The Braves pretty much have that right now. This has been two years in a row where every you know. Three of the four have won back to back. So yep, and that is. So what? Watch out for. Watch out for the Rays in the next few years. So again, next year we're going to have to watch out because everybody from Charleston is going to Bowling Green, and we're going to have to do it all over again. Well, since it's the end of the season, I want to do what I what I've done at the end of every season, and that is. Talk about how good Asheville is. No, seriously, because the the question that I've asked every year now for, I think, four years or three is, four years, what has been our favorite road trip? And with the exception of the time we went to Texas and it was Frisco, every other time we've all said Asheville. And I'm going to ask that question again, and I'm going to already tell you that this year my answer is once again Asheville. I didn't travel that much this year. Um, I didn't either. Because I went to Greenville. Uh, Ash, did, did we go to Asheville this year? Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah, I think we were all there on the same. I, yeah. Like, me yeah. and uh, Scott and Lee had been at breweries all day. So by the time the game went around, I was pretty uh, deep in the sauce. But I still yeah. remember some things. Yeah, because I remember uh, Alan and Jennifer, you stopped over there and talked to us. Yeah, we were sitting in our seats because okay. Evan Carter's parents were sitting in the next section over from us. And I remember people uh, left early and then wrote a nasty review about us. <laughs> it's all yep. coming. But yeah, um, Greenville, I think that was it. I mean, we went to Gastonia for the you know independent, which yeah, uh, I'd have to say Greenville just for. Because I don't have none to pick from. Well, yeah, I don't have brag on Asheville because that whole day was fun. We went to a really, really good place to get breakfast, and then we went to breweries, and the game was fun. We beat the ever-loving dog poo out of the out of the tourists that night, and it was just an all-around good good day. I gotta say, I, I think I gotta agree with Alan though this year. I think my the the Green Monster trip that we made to. Uh, Greenville was my favorite because number one, you're sitting all the way up there on the Green Monster, which is always amazing. Um, we had fireworks, which Greenville and Asheville, Asheville does a great job on fireworks too, but Greenville's right there with them. A train, by. a train went by, and I love trains, so you know. Okay, and there was thunder and lightning in the distance during the game. So it yeah. was – I love thunderstorms. I love trains. It never rained on us. and We never got lightning at the stadium. But it was pretty awesome to see the city of Greenville being lit up by lightning in the background, the train going by, and all that. It was, it was just an amazing night. And I finally got to see a train at Greenville because I finally was able to watch the whole game at Greenville. Because here's something that – So I am lactose intolerant, and they have really delicious ice cream at Greenville. So two out of the last three times I went to Greenville, I've said, screw it, what happens, happens. And then I've spent 
a lot of time not seeing the game. You can do the math. Uh, this time, I did not do that, and I really got to enjoy myself. Yeah, the, the first road trip we took this year was to Greenville, and they were playing the Renegades, but it was the Joe Davis bobblehead, and we sat on the monster, and yeah. we all got sunburnt like crazy. So other than that, it was it was pretty fun. I liked it a lot. So like I said, maybe, I maybe we can sit on the roof. Of the bobbleheads that I got this year, which wasn't a whole lot, that's my favorite bobblehead from this year. Well, with was the that, what was the best promotional giveaway, home or away, that you got? Uh, I really like the championship ring. <laughs> Hands okay. down. Yeah, we're all in agreement, even though it's not the 2015 ring. No, but well, this, this, this gives makes me sense because it's the 20th anniversary. Yeah, this gives me gives me hope that maybe in the future we'll get the 2004, and then maybe later the 2015. I just hope we don't have to wait till the 20th anniversary of the 2015 because I really don't want to wait till 2035. Yeah, I'll be 37, and you guys will be dead. Hey, oh. now. There's, there's a chance of that for me having diabetes. That's, anyway. that's, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's by hand, hands down my favorite giveaway. That might be my favorite giveaway I've ever gotten, period, not just this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when I first heard they were giving them away, I thought, okay, yeah, here comes the Cracker Jack box prize, you know, the cheap little plastic ring I'm probably going to throw away in a couple of weeks after I get tired of it. No, this thing, I mean. I just wish it fit. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it. it's all, it's a chunk of metal, you know. I, I bought Lexington's I'm when sure. they were in the South Atlantic League. So I knew they were metal, but being the crawl dads, I was the same way you were, Jay. One or Jeremy, they're hoping that they wasn't going to be a piece of junk plastic. So I was very surprised when they were metal. But yeah, I'd have to say that's the probably the best one for me as well. You know, I almost stopped myself and said, "Was that this year?" Because like the past seven years of Crawdads baseball have just melted into one giant season for me. Because 2015 we won the championship. 2016 I started sitting with y'all a little bit more, and we started the podcast and everything. So. Really, that whole the whole past seven years has just been one blur. Yeah, this year was I've said it so many times. This year flew by. I mean, not traveling like we did. You would think it would go slow, but and we only had the one back to back week that we were home. It just it, it seemed like it was over in no time. So. I mean, I have two periods of crawdads fandom. I divide it into before and after two thousand fourteen. And both of those chunks just all blend into one. It's the, the orange uh, seat era, bleacher era, and the green seat era. Yeah, pretty much. Sausage sandwich era. <laughs> that just started this year, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy God. Somebody, uh, was that Austin Riley? Somebody, nope. Dansby Swanson just hit a monster. At number 101 for him. 101. Okay. Go ahead, Jeremy. Your question. I was just going to had a trivia question for the for the Braves fan. How many wins do the Braves have right now? Uh, 99. I'm looking at a graphic of it right now. Ah. <laughs> it's on the it's on the uh, this little score Chiron in the corner of the screen. How how many wins do the Mets have? Uh. In like four seconds, I can tell you because it's showing a replay right now. <laughs> 98. The Mets yeah, have 98. I'm showing this replay, it'll show that. What? Anyway. Yep, 98. Was there any moment in the season that will stand out for you this year? Oh, man. Uh, oh. A, a couple for bad reasons that I'm not going to talk about on the podcast, but uh, not really for good. 
really good reasons. Um, I mean, you're putting me on the spot here. If I had some time to think about it, I could really tell you. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, there's there's a lot that stand out, but the funny thing is, almost none of them have anything to do with the game. Walk off home run. Oh, like, oh, I know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. On the field. It's all happened in the dugout or over to the side after the game or before the game. We all, all three of us said it was the best game we'd ever seen at home, the 4th of July game, mm -hmm. the big comeback. Mm -hmm. That's why I said most of them, not all. That's the, that's that the was a great that game. sticks out to me is that. Is the, uh, is that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I said. Yeah, that really was a great game. I honestly don't even remember that game now. To be, <laughs> but, yeah, it was – more off the field stuff, I guess, or the thing that we started in 108 where we would have a player of the game and then have them come over and take a picture with them this year, I think. The bad guy I, of the game. Yeah. I mean, it was against Winston-Salem. But, you know, the, the Farquhar story, getting to know who he is, mm -hmm. getting to, you know, him joking back with this and I can't think of his damn name now, but the guy that was getting made fun of and I talked to his dad, the major league player who went oh, you know, wow. Jeez. anyway, so I'm tipping my tongue. Yeah. Who was who was the, the dad that I talked to? Tony Womack. Yeah, I will be right back. Yeah. I mean that's that's something I mean you know, you know, I'm not good with names, but knowing that yeah, you know, what happened, like I said, with Farquhar, getting to know him, not know him, but talk to him, and then just having mm -hmm. a, a serious conversation with the World Series champ, you know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's gonna pretty be, awesome. That's going to be one of my baseball moments there. So. And I think yeah. – I, I got to agree with Ethan. I think the only cool thing will be for me is when we were almost got the no hitter. Uh, I don't think I'll ever forget yeah. that. One. John, oh. I mean, even though it sucked, but just knowing that it was, oh, it was a great uh, game, man. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a great game, and just that one moment. That one moment was the only part of it that sucked, and even and we still got a. a a one hitter out of it, which is pretty awesome. But to see somebody come so close. And then yeah, we took Josh out to dinner, or John took John out to dinner. And um, I told him, I said, you know, I didn't talk to you for days after because I knew he was upset. But he said, it was just one of those things that happened. He said, but, and I told him, I said, I knew when you double pumped, that ball was going to be hit. He said, yeah, he was going for the sidearm. But when he was leaning mm -hmm. forward, he had he knew he had too much momentum, so he had to pull it back, and that's when he doubled and then threw it overhand. Mm -hmm. and he's like, I should have just threw it over the catcher. I was like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, just – Yeah, because there wasn't anybody on base. But hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, Crombat's had quite a few moments this year. I mean, I'm – Missed both of them. Uh, they had two, two no hitters. Yeah, well, we all missed those because they were on the road. Yeah, and they had their last no hitter had been ten years prior, and then we get two in one one year. That that should that says a lot about our our pitching staff. But didn't we no hit Bowling Green? Yes, the first one. Yeah, so. Put that yeah, it was a. Uh, <laughs> it took took us four pitchers to do it, but it's still a no hitter. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that's a that's a hell of a lineup to no hit. I mean, so, I mean that they can definitely. That's definitely a huge feather in in their in their hats. Yeah. And the other one was uh, Greenville the week that we went down there and sat on the, yep. the Green Monster. It was like the night before, I think. Yeah, but Greenville's – Because I remember 
yeah, there was a guy sitting behind us, and uh, we were winning, and he was talking trash about our pitching. And, I'm, and, you know, Amy said to me, like, how in the hell can you talk trash about our pitching when we just no-hit you and we're winning this game? Right. And I said, well, I guess that's the alcohol talking. And it's also a Boston yeah. man, probably. Yeah, he sounded like it. <laughs> he sounded like he might have been from Boston. But still, it was a great experience that night, even with the guy talking trash. Right. Which sometimes that makes it even more fun if they're doing it in the right way. But he was not. So... Uh, yeah. What is the – well, I guess it's time to shit on the dads now, but not the dads. I would get out of my head. But, on the, well, talk about our worst, the things we would improve. Exactly. The things we would like to not see ever happen again. Go for it. Um, well, you know, you remember my rant last year, what happened with the hot dogs last year. Right. Well, they did improve the hot dogs. The, every hot dog I had this year, uh, which I know I said I wasn't ever going to have them again, but I did break down and have quite way more hot dogs than I should have. Um, the hot dogs this year, they were solid. Um, but I know several people who got sick because the chicken wasn't fully cooked. All the chicken I no, ever that's saw. something. Oh, you saw what? All the chicken I ever saw was always burnt. I never saw it. Yeah, that was, that was well. Um, Priscilla got some that was still cold and pink in the middle. I did and get she that. She got food poisons. Well, you're kind of going in and out on me here. Technical difficulties. I did get that one chicken sandwich from the cafe that started the whole name call. Yeah, it took you like two hours. Yeah. So, I mean, with that little rant and rave, things kind of got fixed. But that sandwich was cold. And like I said, it, it took yeah. three innings almost and it came out cold. But they did try to fix that kind of stuff. So. You know, and another thing. Go ahead. I just don't see the, the concession stand stuff problems ever getting fixed. And I don't understand, you know, why. Well, I do because there's nobody there that it's constantly, it's, it's always um, volunteer work. You know, yeah. you're going to have somebody coming in every other game and, you know, just there to get the, I'm not saying there to get the money. But they're to raise money there. And organizations and everything, so they don't really know what's going on. If we had a dedicated employees to the concessions, I think it would be better. What I miss? Well, well, we do have some, but they're the ones like you know, like Chad and uh, oh, I can't remember her name, but anyway, uh, you know, but they can only do so much. Right. And I agree with you. I think they the concessions won't get better until you have staff in the concession stand the same most nights. Have actual employees running the registers, on the grill, all of that. And I know the crawdads want to uh, give money to these organizations, and I think that's a great thing, and I don't want to see that stop. But they can do like what Bojangles does. Bojangles has what they call spirit nights for local schools. And like each school or some, and sometimes even like youth groups at a church can sign up for it and they get a night. And Wendy's does the same thing. They get a night where they get a portion of the proceeds. If people go in there and say, hey, I'm here to support whoever. Well, the crawdads could just say, hey, Tonight is, you know, pink ribbon night. We're giving, you know, money to a you know, breast cancer group or whatever. 
Tonight is, uh, you know, St. John's Lutheran Church youth group night. They don't have to be there. We can still right. give them the money. Okay, so be before we got on this food thing, which uh, it's like, what, the 400th time we, br we brought the concessions up on this show, for good reason, what were we talking about before? Because I need to get caught back up. Nothing. We were just going over the no hitters. You know what? What the question that you left on? We were continuing it. Okay. And then we got to what's yeah. what's the one thing that you think should be changed for next year for the crowdouts? Okay. Yeah, and that would have been my answer as well. Food. Jennifer and I we've and talked about this just... before, but I would change because we've beat that dead horse. So bad. What I would change probably would be let's knock down the wall in the team store where the closet is onto the nurse's station. Our let's yeah. You know, let's have a bigger team store because how many times have you walked past that thing and you're like, I want to go in there, but there's okay, seven yeah. people in there, which is packed out. You, know, you can only get seven or eight people in there. How much money? Has the team lost because of people walking by and said, I'm not walking in that damn thing? Or just have kiosks on the concourse like they do in Greenville. But you got to have employees. Yeah, I mean, we have, yeah and, and that is a real struggle with everybody right now getting people that are willing to show up and work. Yeah. You know, but, you know, they need to just completely revamp. I know we've got off of the food, but. This kind of ties into both. You know, there's a, there's a phrase, read the room. You know, the crawdads need to read the room. They need to see, okay, well, this is what our fans want. You know, they're not just hearing it from us. They're hearing it from the casual fans, too, on Yelp and Google and all of that, you know. I've seen people complaining about the size of the store. I've seen people complaining about the food. I've watched, I've sat there and watched people, none of them, well, some of them were people that, you know, we know from the game and stuff, but I'm not counting them. I'm set, I'm talking, sit there and watch, you know, 20, 30 people get up and throw their French fries away because they're nasty. Not because they're not cooked, not because they're not hot, but because they just do not taste good. And they don't have to be nasty. We were there one night where they were really, really good because they were getting them from a different supplier than they usually do. They could have just kept those. Those were delicious. Mm -hmm. Get a crinkle cut fry. I love a crinkle cut fry. They need to just listen to their fans. Fans will tell you, hey, we like this. We don't like this. Do you it's not just us. I could, I could see why they might discount what some of what we say. I get that. But when your casual fans are telling you that, people that come to 10 games a year and less are also saying that. Also, there's something wrong. This is, this is a nitpick. Can we please get a 21 and up wristband so when you go on a crowded night, you don't have to stand in line as every single person gets their ID out to get a beer? We used to have that. Yeah, I, I think mean, that, that doesn't would... take. You just anyway. go up, you show them your ID, you get a little pink wrist, wristband, and then you can go get whatever, buy whatever you want, and not have to take your ID out every single time. You know what's funny is the you mean wristbands like this that they use to say that they inspected our bags. Sure. So we know they've got them, but can was they do the, the math to figure out? Was it the one? It was the second to last game when we had the rain out that we were waiting for it to get called when the players left 45 minutes before they caught. They left the stadium when, and then they called. When Rome pulled their buses up and left. Yeah. But that was the bases and bruise night as well. They checked mm -hmm. and gave you a wristband if you purchased the little – the little bitty mug, which I got mm -hmm. it right here that someone gave me, you know, Tim gave me one his. You've done it one night. 
And then, you know, it made it faster for those people who purchased that package to go back and get back and forth because it was super small. But, you know, if you can do it one night, you can always do it. Yeah, you can do it all here. I've been all in the table, a chair, and a person. Yeah, that's what they, that's what in the bar they would refer to as a flight. Yeah, I mean, that's the size. I mean, here's an ink pen. You know, it's. That's the thing about uh, sampling craft beer. That's what, that's what it, you get small, they're called flights. You yeah. get small, but mm -hmm. you're, but you get like five at a like time. Four of those. Usually you get four or five of them at a time and you don't have to, you know, keep going if back. They only gave you one of these and you had to drink it and go back and drink it and go back. But you needed it, you needed that to be quickly because there's a lot of people doing it. So, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I love that idea. You can definitely do that. But yeah, that, that basically, <clears throat> we didn't get to talk about it. But. And yeah. this is immediately going to change because the person that we've spent all year bragging about isn't going to work there anymore because she found a better job that's going to pay better yeah. and rec and respect mm -hmm. the level of work that she does. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Emily. And that's that this year, the promotions, while not every single one of them have hit, have been a lot better than they've been in previous years, clearing that very low bar that they had to clear. And yeah. that it might go back to the way it was now that Emily's gone, but let's hope not. Let's hope the next person has taken some inspiration. Hope it gets better. Yeah. I Emily mean, and even the ones the right that, track. that didn't hit, at least they were trying. But anyway. Do you we think lost another one, too. Do what? Oh, yeah. Chris and said. they did my spy movie night that I, that I said on the podcast. Of course, this was already an idea they, months beforehand, and I didn't know about it, but they did it. And, and, and they incorporated the, some player names in the fish or not a fish, uh, which I, I think that would be a great – try to get the players involved as much as you can, you know, because player-fan interaction, even on that level, even though they're not directly interacting, for kids, they love it. Oh, yeah. How that's many how times? the fans get to know who the players are. How many times have we saw kids get – because we sit right behind the dugout. How many times have we saw kids shout out a player's name 15 times just to get them to turn around and wave at him and say, hey. Um, every night almost. Yeah. At least on the weekends anyway. Do you think we should go to mobile ticketing? Um, I think it should be an option, but that – I think I think it – in, like optional, like you still can do the old way or right. or mobile. I don't think it should right. be only mobile because some people because. and this actually like um, so I have I like to you know I go to a lot of NASCAR races and I like to collect the tickets. Yeah, I got a scrapbook full of tickets from Charlotte, Darlington, Daytona when they and and because Daytona the course, the NASCAR does, does because the Coke NASCAR also does, does collector level tickets too yeah. though. The Coke 600 and the Southern 500 Darlington are both big crown jewel events. And, of course, Daytona is, which mm -hmm. we went to a few years ago, thanks to some connections that didn't quite work out. But um, uh, those tickets are really nice tickets. And I was super upset that when I went to the 600 last year, it or that every 600, the, this year and the year before that, basically all the races I've been to in the post-COVID world have been mobile only. And that makes me upset because I love holding a ticket and having a ticket, which this brings me to an idea. And I've actually, I'm, I'm going to credit stand-up comedian Joe List for this idea, actually. He's a stand-up comedian that has, a, base, has a, a comedy podcast, but also a baseball podcast. He's a big baseball guy. Anyway, uh, he was saying, if you want to, if, if it's more efficient to do mobile-only tickets, and that's just what the future is going to be, but major league teams can have can charge you just a time a, a little upcharge to get your real ticket and i obviously i wish it was just the regular way it's always been where you could just do that in the first place but if you're gonna do mobile ticketing that gives major league teams another excuse to get a couple more dollars out of you you get your mobile ticket and then if you want to you get your physical ticket too if that's the future 
the reason why I would not want to see us go away from physical paper tickets is because physical tickets they don't go offline. You don't they don't go down when the internet company has an accident and it quits working. Oh yeah. Like when me and Lee were in Martinsville, which as you know is in the middle of BFE and it was raining yep. and the internet went completely out. And we stood there for 45 minutes in the freezing cold trying to get mm -hmm. tickets pulled up on our phone when we could have just had them right in our hands. But they could also yep. do something like Frisco did. This is a commemorative ticket for Jack Leiter's first outing. It's only 2,000 yeah. and they actually, they actually numbered them. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, if you're, I, 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 went on a, I went on a rant on this show about Martinsville and how if you're going to make tickets be mobile only, have some internet there for the people to use. But I bring that up because should we, as a second part of this, do like Greenville does? If you buy a ticket, you have a survey to fill out. That way we can get better. And that way the crawdads can see where the fans want, you know, this and that and to better the next time they come through the, the, the gates. Well, that's a fantastic idea, but who's going to actually do that? I mean, how many times have you been at, I don't know, Red Lobster and you're paying on the little mobile gimmick and it says answer this survey and you just go, nope, next. That Everybody's man, going to do that perfect. here too. But at the same time, you know, we've done that a couple of years ago, the Burlington episode, you know, they done that at the end of the year. So, I mean, some some people do watch these things and it's like I said, mm -hmm. we're not out here to change everything. We're just trying to, we just want to, you know, to make it better for Joe Snow over here who's never been to a game. And like the lady came for backwards night. How, how far away yeah. did she come? And it wasn't backwards. Oh, from like, I don't know. I think she was from like Connecticut or Massachusetts. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. New England. It was somewhere in New England. But Which she drove. It's like a 14 hour drive at least. For that, for that promotion, she decided to make a trip down to little Hick town, Hickory, North Carolina to check out that promotion. And you got yeah. to understand that people do that kind of things. And that's what, I mean, we, us three, Jennifer, you know, we get these promotions from, you know, granted, I look at all the North Carolina things. And if I can afford to drive this year, I saw why we didn't go, because, you know, it was too damn expensive. But if we can find a nice bobblehead or a cool giveaway or a cool theme night, you know, when we're not at home, we're going to travel and go experience that. Yeah. So that's what when we are at home because Scott went and got that Black Panther bobblehead in Charlotte and then came right back and saw the end of our game. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that do that. I mean, there's people that, you know, get the bobbleheads and they go through the line a couple times, get a couple tickets, go out, come back in, and they make money selling bobbleheads. You can do that. But, you know, I'm not going to drive down there to a game. Oh, I did go to Canapolis this year because it just popped up on my picture frame. Um, to get a, a giveaway and then turn around and come back home. You know, I'm going to take the whole day pretty much. And, you know, but yeah, I just, like I said, I just wanted to, to, to be better for the next year. And this year was, like I said, it flew by and we've done a lot of, a lot, a lot of good things better than the past years. But there's still a lot more that can be done. You're not going to do it all at once. So, man, there's my rant and rant. No. Yeah, let's just go on to something else. Okay. Yeah, because we've been going for. We want to talk about what's about starting tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, we can start about tomorrow. Um, the hat that I'm wearing. The Arizona Fall League starts tomorrow, which is. All stars yeah. through all of the parent yeah. clubs organizations. So. Yeah, it's supposed to be a showcase league for minor league baseball. A showcase, uh, not watch. 
Yeah, yeah. But I've been watching football. Like for football. It's time for hockey. They televise the Fall Stars game, and they televise the championship game. That's it. Even though they play for a whole month. And they have an entire day anyway. dedicated just to baseball. I know. If they only, you know, if they only had something like, you know, MLB TV or MLB that Network. Channel, or that channel will show a – ILB TV. That channel will show a documentary about the top ten left fielders from 1978 while there's actual baseball being played. Yeah. You know, like right now, you'd never know the world class is going on. Like you, you saying that right now is the first I've heard of the World Baseball Classic this year, and I love the World Baseball Classic. You know, you, you, I, I don't want to bring it back to soccer, but the World Cup is coming up, and you, and and there's advertisements for that everywhere because it's the biggest mm-hmm. sporting event in the world, pretty much. Yeah, they even went out and got John Hamm to play soccer or to play Santa Claus. Yeah, well, they did that because. Um, Brief history lesson, the World Cup is usually in the summer, but this year it's in the winter because it's in Qatar and it'd be way too hot in the summer. Anyway, yeah. they yeah, they got commercials, there's billboards everywhere. I mean, it, it, the, the World Cup, you know, it, it, it's huge. And the World Baseball Classic has the potential to be big like the World Cup because baseball is mm. also a sport that has that has a lot and a lot, a lot of viewership outside the United States. It's huge in Latin America. It's huge bigger. in Japan and Korea. Japan and Korea are number two and three behind MLB and biggest baseball leagues mm-hmm. in the world. It's not so big in Europe, but in the United States and in North America and Asia and South America, it's huge. So it has the potential to be as big as the World Cup. They got to advertise it more. There's and it doesn't have the same prestige as the World Cup because the World Cup's been going on since 1950. There is one team that actually made the World Cup that is kind of near and dear to someone's heart in 108. Wait, wait, not 1950, way before that, like the 20, because they stopped it briefly for World War II. Anyway, it started yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. But there's one team. You're saying, Alan? There's one team that's near and dear to someone's heart. It's their country that sits in 108. That who would have ever thought that this would have a team, the Czech Republic. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Europe. Soccer's huge in Europe. I'm talking about baseball. Oh, I thought we were talking about the World Cup. But, well, of course, of course there's the footy over there. It's huge. It's Europe. But, no, talking about baseball, I never knew that. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought. That's news to me. That's well, awesome, I heard, though. I heard on a good baseball podcast, the show before the show. So. But yeah, they actually made the World Baseball Classic. So nice. Monica, I don't know if she, uh, she probably don't even know. You know, she's from there and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure who all is going to be there. I know Mike Trout's going to be a manager or something like that. Well, only, yeah. only two people in the Czech on the Czech roster have a link on Wikipedia out of the entire team. So it's pretty. So they're pretty obscure. But back to the Arizona Fall League, we have nine players on the Rangers. Yes, well, we know eight of them. So, yeah, we know them all, but uh, Kumar Rocker. Yep. What do you have it the was, list in front of you? I That's do. Why my face is glowing. Ah, okay. Well, uh, go on ahead then. So. Number one, well, it's not in any particular order, but number one is an infielder. We saw him this year. Acuna. Oh, he's two for two. Number two, they've got him as a UT, which is utility. Chase Easley. Number three. Take it easily. He's a catcher. He's my boy. He's my adopted son, and I'm super proud of him. Cody Freeman. Cody, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So who said that he would come on this show? So after everything's over with, we're going to see if we can get it lined up and have him on the show. Number four, outfielder Trevor Halver. Number five, a left-handed pitcher Jake Glatz. 
Six, right-handed pitcher Kumar. Number seven, right-handed pitcher Nick Starr. Number eight, left-handed pitcher Grant Wolfram. And number nine, outfielder A.A. Ron Zavala. Z. And I remember we always used to do that when, when Wolfram walked up, Wolfpack style. Yeah. For life, mm -hmm. too sweet. And there's a number 10, not a player. Yeah. But Carlos is a coach. Carlos Cardoza. Who said yeah. he would come on the show yeah. as well? Je Jeff McNeil just hit, I mean, like a 750,000 foot home run. I mean, that thing landed in Decatur. Sorry. <laughs> hey, it's a baseball uh, show. At least I'm talking about a baseball game. I'm not talking about the Panthers losing to the bitch ass Cardinals. I'm looking for a fuck to give, but I actually do care about the the Braves. So, you know, go Austin Rally. Yeah. That's why I'm going to Texas next year to watch them play the Rangers. Anyway. And in case anybody from Arizona, uh, that's in charge of radio or TV over there. Uh, I, I did not just call them the bitch ass Cardinals. I love the Cardinals. They're a great organization. And uh, yeah, go Cardinals. Speaking of somewhere else, how's the uh, internship going up towards your sister's way? Is that still happening? Uh, well, that has really nothing to do with uh, work or internships or anything. That's that that's a whole different thing. Uh, but I, I'll be. For those that don't know, I, 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 the current plan that can change, you know, card subject to change, is that uh, after I graduate uh, college, I'll be moving to uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, but there's a lot of moving parts with that, so we'll see. Okay. And I will report on minor league baseball happenings up there. If I do end up going there, which right now yeah. is the plan. If you go, who are the who are the teams? The, the minor Harris, league teams you would be. The Harrisburg Senators are about a ten to fifteen minute drive away from where I will be living. Should I go through with this move? Nice. Probably go to a lot of those then. And they're with the Washington Nationals. Mm hmm. Anybody else close within a couple hours? Or? Oh, uh, a lot of people. Uh, the town that I am currently allegedly moving to, uh, is an hour and 45 minutes from Philadelphia, uh, about two hours to Baltimore. So say about two thirty, two forty five 245 to DC and about four hours away from New York city. So that's part of the reason why I'm moving up there because, um, I want to be a sports broadcaster. And the Northeast, the teams are a lot, the, the major teams in the Northeast are a lot more consolidated together than they are down South. So going up there with all those markets close by, I think will lead to me finding more uh, opportunities for work. And hey, when the, when, the, when the dads are in town to play uh, Brooklyn, maybe you could hit, you know, jump on the train right into the city. Go watch Hickory and the Cyclones play, and then maybe taking a Mets or a Yankees game. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So here's the devil's advocate coming out. Do you think moving up north to be a sports broadcaster with your redneck accent? Well, I'm working on that. Um, I think of the I three of us, of the three of us, I have the least thick southern accent. <clears throat> just of the three of us here, uh, and 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 I have. You know, I can do my uh, generic broadcasting voice if I wanted to, but you know that that's that can work to my advantage though because I can be the folksy good old boy that they that they all love. I was going to say there's a certain percentage of the population up north that actually they love anything southern. You know, one of the big things up north now is for these mom and pop southern cooking restaurants to open up and they are going like wildfire yeah, yeah but, and i remember when i was up there every time i opened my mouth there was like four or five people turn around and look at me like oh man you know where are you from i love your accent 
I okay. feel like me trying one of those southern cooking places up north would be like a real Italian trying Olive Garden. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying. Not going to end well. They love southern southern things and southern people up north a whole lot more than, than people think. The main thing that um, I'm not looking forward to is I don't like really cold weather. And the northeast will have a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, they'll actually have snow. Yeah, and I have you'll to learn to drive in it. Yeah, because yeah, my sister to to tells me it. that my sister tells me that people at her job are like, they do the here's the most here's the number one annoying thing you can do to somebody who with an accent that's different than yours is stop someone in the middle of a sentence and say, "Oh, say that word again." And according to my sister, that happens up there quite often. Oh yeah, it does. It happened to me, and I was just there on vacation for like a week. Yeah. Well, before we head out, let's one more question about the fraud ads on how to make it things better. Since this is the end of the year, next going in the next year, what promotion would you like to see? Well, I, I want to see. I don't know. I don't necessarily want to see new or ones, give them. but I want to see some current ones done up more like i want to see i want to see a star wars night that is really really hardcore star wars night and i yeah. love because you guys know i really love the bond movies so i thought the idea of the spy movie night was cool but they should do more with it and i hope they do that well i know i know emily wanted to do more with both of those nights star wars and the, the spy movie night but there were some <clears throat> individuals in decision making that just said, nope, you can only do X amount or X things, nothing I mean, beyond that. Obviously, I'm not expecting to go to spy movie <clears throat> night and see Daniel Craig in a Aston Martin throwing out the first pitch. That's obviously not gonna happen. But you could no. do something. You could do you could you could take what you already got that works that people like. Same thing. I, I'm using the Star Wars and the spy movies as an exam as two examples because I really love Star Wars and I really love Bond movies. But so, superhero night so do a lot of people. Superhero night also falls under the same category of it already works. Do it better and it'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. I know the first well, we went to Louisville one year and it was happened to be Star Wars night, and they had characters like crazy there like the sand i don't know nothing about star wars but it was one of the sand creatures because we got a picture with lucas with and like they were 100 percent cosplayed out where it looked just like mm -hmm. they were coming out of the tv i mean it looked it was awesome i'm, I'm with you on that if you're going to do it and i understand it's going to cost money to hire those kind of people. But, and also on superhero night, don't don't pigeonhole yourself by adding a brand to it, like Marvel or DC. Just do superheroes well, in general. That was minor league baseball. That was minor league baseball that did that because every team in minor league baseball this year did the Defenders of the Diamond Marvel jerseys. Yeah, but we had Batman there on a Marvel night, which was funny. But yeah, which was if they just dumb. if they just got rid of if don't do Marvel, don't do DC, just do superheroes in general, and that opens it up a lot more. If and I would, think, I would like to see, I'd love, keep it with things I love. I'd love to see a wrestling night and a NASCAR night. Yeah, NASCAR night would go over really well. I mean, I'm not, uh, I used to be a big NASCAR fan. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it anymore, but we're in the heart of NASCAR country. I mean, that would go huge. And you could definitely get a driver, a, a rather large name, a known quantity, to come out and sign autographs that night. Depending, I mean, on you could get legend. I guarantee. Well, I guarantee you, if they went to uh, Harry Gant, who just lives in Taylorsville, I guarantee you he would come out, and he was—he's a legend. He's yeah. a former champion. I would be in I mean, that line in the heart. People would come out of the woodwork. Same thing with the Jarrett's. They're also local. 
Yeah. Yeah. And and I guarantee you, Dale would do it and Ned would definitely do it. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I mean, I know. I mean, the only reason. The only reason Dale might not do it is because he, you know, he's kind of busy sometimes. Yeah, he's a ESPN. broadcaster. So we talked about yeah. the whole wrestling thing with, I think, Mark, the old GM, and they mm -hmm. they charge absurd prices mm -hmm. to come out there and sign autographs. Granted, you had Mick Foley, and you had, I forgot which Hardy was it, but still it was funny because it's common sports. Yeah. But, it was Jeff, actually. But you had Mick Foley. I don't, I mean, and I know there's a lot of yeah. people who don't do shit about wrestling, but everybody knows Mick Foley. And he's there's a lot of people around here. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah I mean, the, you know uh, the, the Mid Atlantic, the South in general, and especially the Mid Atlantic uh, region of the South, I mean, that was the NWA and WCW stronghold for years and years and years. So, I mean, Wrestling is still North Carolina wrestling just as much as the South. That's a, but I, that's I, I, a, I would like to see a bobblehead of a former player. You know, it ain't got to be a hamburger and fry bobbleheads. Yeah, I still want to see that. I mean, Josh Young got called up. You know, he's doing he's doing pretty damn good. Bubba, Brett Martin. I mean, I'm just saying that because they're all buddies. And but you know, or hamburger and fry. Or whoever before as before my time, but, you know, just somebody that people could remember. Like I said, the last one we done was Andrew McCutcheon. I would also like to have a Nickelodeon night, and at the very oh, wow. end, have something done with slime. That would be awesome. If you're going yeah. to do, let's just put it like this: if you're watching this, whoever makes these decisions, if you're going to do a theme night, do your research. And figure out how you can do something in between innings that's 100% has to deal with what your theme is called. Well, they, they do games all the time that involve water. Just put some green food coloring in it. You got that's Nickelodeon. What, yeah, you got slime, that's what I'm saying. It? But, you know, you can still have your knocker balls and everything and your, you know, dizzy bats. But do something. Everything that you do has to do with that theme. And... Get somebody to hold that damn camcorder and project it on that damn scoreboard so I know what's going yeah. on behind me where I cannot see up here. Use that damn scoreboard. And I want us to bring back a food challenge, just of, of some sort. Yes. Uh, if you read the, the call you know, challenge, MLB, they have the ballpark guide. It says at the bottom, it may come back. What I'm saying. So if you go yeah. on that, on that website to look at what's going on in this area and what the team's about, and they read that this thing's coming back, make it happen, Captain. I say, you know, you're talking about things that we want to see. You know me, I love jerseys. I love Star Wars. Everybody else does a Star Wars jersey. Even Kanapolis, when they were in their crappy old stadium and couldn't draw 10 people, did – Star Wars jerseys, and they auctioned them off, and every one of them sold for, like, the cheapest one went for, like, $150. So you can't tell me that Kannapolis, who wasn't drawing anybody at the time, can make money off of those, but then and Hickory, who's drawing 1400 a night, can't make, can't have a Star Wars jersey and auction it off? And make yeah. money off of it? I'm with you. I mean, yeah, we I, have the Wars, jersey. I have a Star Wars jersey from Frisco. So, yeah, this has once again become another episode of us complaining about our. No, well, it's not complaining. It's, it, we're not complaining. We just, this is what we would like to see in the future. Granted, we're three people who are nobodies in the stadium. Well, well, we're three people that go to a lot of games and people recognize sometimes. Oh, you're the guy down there that does the thing with the sign and the hey, you're the people over there with the cowbells. You know that I've been quite at, often. I've been at school. I've been at school or like at a tailgate party or whatever, and somebody, some guy, some guy I don't know that goes to LR is like, hey, you sit down there with the people with the cowbells, right? Yeah, I do. So, you know, we we are we're not nobody's completely. I'm just saying, we're just. 
then that's why they don't listen to us because we shit on them so much. But we're not. This is not a shitting episode. This is what we would like to see. Well, I did have to leave Mark ten minutes earlier, so kind of. But anyway. But let's yeah. um, tell these guys that's in the Arizona Fall League, good luck. Follow them on Instagram. I know yeah. Cody. He's on Instagram. That's Suarez. Uh, you know, and root for them. And we're going to get some stuff lined up, maybe have some interview. I, I know of three interviews this this offseason that we can have on. So I, there's some more that I'm working on. Um, and if you And I've got an idea about doing a show. That you know, you know, I send you guys links. Let's, I'm gonna put this out there. I send you the link to come on here. What if I post this link on Facebook and we're sitting here doing what we're doing right now, and all of a sudden this black spot here pops up with somebody else? We don't even know who the hell it is. But mm, yeah, interesting we idea. It could work. It could not work. I mean, yeah. you, never know. you know, we're still gonna stick with our no religion, no politics thing. We're gonna talk about baseball. And it could be somebody that, that lives out in Minnesota. What are the what 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 yeah. what the third teams do out there that they go to? You know, what do they look forward to in baseball? You know, just silly stuff. But we're just going to keep it about baseball. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a fun idea. Know. It could it could go wrong quickly, but it is a fun yeah, idea. It's an interesting idea. And if it goes, and if if we were doing it, and somebody came on, and you know, say it was somebody who just wants to watch the world burn and wants to you know, troll everybody, well, we can edit that out and just not air that shit. If we had somebody to screen the calls and it doesn't turn into one of those C-SPAN episodes where just every other call is somebody trolling, which those are funny. There's a great YouTube compilation of those. It, it's an interesting idea. But you remember, you can't heckle the hecklers. It doesn't work out for them. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I do have a, a, a nickname with a bunch of the, – with the baseball players at LR calling me the Hickory Heckler because they came to one game and they saw me sitting in, in 108, actually, back then, back when I was doing that, going back and forth. And uh, and ever since then, there's been like four or five baseball players that were freshmen at the time that are still there because it's six years and I still haven't graduated yet, but I'm almost done. And, uh, hey, it's the Hickory Heckler all the time. When I'm not even – I don't even do that much heckling compared to you and Chris. Yeah. But it is what it is, and we'll figure some stuff out to keep you entertained for an hour and a half, even though you ain't going to watch but five seconds. <laughs> Hit that thumbs up if you're still watching this. That's why we need to start clickbait titles. You won't believe what we said about Frisco. It's true. Yeah, they were. They will believe it, though. Congratulations to my boys in Frisco. So, but yeah, John Matthews got his ring. Avery got his ring. Blaine got his ring. Ranger got a ring. Acuna. Yep. They deserved yeah. it. They kicked ass. So, congratulations again. And I guess I'm done. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, the Braves are losing this game right now, which is not making me very happy. But it's only the third inning. We got a lot to go. All right. Well, we'll see you when we see you. Have a good one. Peace. Peace. Oh.